One week of food vouchers for 1.4 million children cost the same amount of money as half a day of Eat Out to Help Out. It's an extraordinary statistic. Even more extraordinary given the fact that Tories are so good with money. What makes it even more spectacular is that it's a huge PR own goal. So what's going on? An England footballer, Marcus Rashford, has decided to take Gary Lineker's mantle as the nicest, best footballer in Britain. One day, no doubt, getting his own brand of crisps in some part of Manchester named after him. The free school meals debate has turned into a gigantic story, so big, in fact, that it seems to knock everything else off the headlines. According to the Imperial College researchers, 96,000 people a day in England are being infected with COVID-19, and the epidemic is doubling in size every nine days. On that trend, there would be 12 million new cases a day by Christmas. The debate has opened up some pretty extraordinary extraordinary fissures in British society. Questions start being asked like, how do we know these vouchers are going to the right people? How do we know it's being spent properly? How do we know the system isn't being abused? Howard Fly to have said that the trial benefit, the abolition of trial benefit for middle income families would stop them breeding while those with the benefit would go on breeding. And was that what was wanted? Um, people on the cultural left often feel that the state's role is to provide for those most vulnerable and most in need. But on the right, it's always been seen as an opportunity to bash over the head with a stick people who claim benefits. Benefit claimants, the idea of benefit scrounging, of taking welfare when you don't need it, has been a, a preserve of the Daily Mail, the Daily Express, and most of the red tops for, well, as long as I can remember. In fact, bashing benefit scroungers became an extremely effective tool during austerity. How do you feel as a man to be a scammer, to be a sponger, to be a liar? Not very good. Be For you, your justification is it's about survival. Yes. But what you are is you're taking money out of other people's pockets. Could it be that in the upside down, topsy turvy reality of 2020, that the Tories actually like this free school meal debate? Let's just analyse it for a second. Putting free school meals out for every child in the country is frankly an absolute drop in the ocean. So why are they doing it? Because the Tories are good at PR. They always have been. Usually their campaigns were run by Saatchi and Saatchi. What's so interesting about this is that it provides the mother of all smoke screens because simultaneously they're using it as a distraction from everything else that's going on. Problem is, you've rushed it forward, haven't you? Because you want to take the headlines away from Dominic Cummings. It's priceless, Kay. I'm normally accused of delaying these things and bringing them in too slowly. Uh, we, we, it's, I, 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 I... At the heart of every successful pandemic response globally has been track and trace. We've done videos on it, but what we've never really focused on is Dido Harding herself. After huge criticism and calls to ramp up testing again, the government announced a new programme of test and trace led by Conservative peer Baroness Harding. Harding's background is in management, working at Thomas Cook, Tesco and Sainsbury's before becoming chief executive of telecoms company Talk Talk. Under her, it was voted Britain's worst business for customer service. A cyber attack also led to the details of thousands of customers to be accessed, costing the company £60 million. She was made a Conservative life peer and in 2017 was appointed chair of NHS improvement. And absolutely and utterly messed it up. So in any normal circumstances you'd report her surely to the anti-corruption specialist within government who just happens to be her husband MP James Penrose. Both these people are part of an elite who take jobs because they're tapped on the shoulder. Whether it's Dominic Cummings or Dido Harding, these people are being rewarded for failure. No, the, to forgive me, the clue is in the, the name, Mr. Barker. It's called test and trace. It's not Indeed, test. And, and it's not test and then don't get bothers to get in touch with. People, 101,000 contacts of people with COVID were not contacted by the test and trace system. 17,000 of people, 17,000 people who'd had a positive test were not contacted, were not traced, in other words. I put it to you, it's simply not working. And the sums that they're taking are astronomical. 12 billion here, 5 billion there, 180 million pounds 
has been given out to Deloitte and McKenzie to do strategic planning. Surely strategic planning that could have been done in the civil service. But yet again, the government bypasses the public sector and gives big old meaty contracts out to the private sector. Now, I know it seems that we're banging on a drum that we've been talking about a lot on Not The News, but the point will become clear very quickly. Because the longer that you're talking about the free school meals and the fact that we can't afford it, the less time you're spending analysing the core issue which stands in front of us as we grapple with this second wave. I wish I could be funnier about this. I wish it could be something that we could have a laugh about. And we've still not got that app. You said the app was absolutely essential to this track and trace. You, the app is still not ready until next week at the earliest, maybe after that, and yet you brought this forward. Um, I suppose many of my viewers will think it's not a laughing matter. And frankly, their response is laughable. But if you think that the Tories have any issue with being depicted as some sort of Dickensian workhouse, some kind of Fagin not being able to give Oliver his second meal when he said, please, sir, can I have some more? Then you're nuts. <laughs> Please, sir, I want some more. What? We don't want to see children going hungry this winter, this Christmas. I want some more. So what do we do now? How do we resurrect Track and Trace? Who do we turn to? Well, it seems pretty clear to me. Well, we double our efforts to do stuff like this. Taiwan just hit 200 days without a locally transmitted case of the coronavirus. This is a significant milestone as we're seeing cases in Europe surge again. Taiwan just hit this milestone, as you say, that's the world's by far the best virus record. And it generally comes down to three principles. There are prudent actions, early deployment and fast response. England is to face a new month long lockdown across the nation, starting on Thursday and lasting until the 2nd of December. Despite having repeatedly rejected calls for a nationwide lockdown in favour of localised tiered measures, Boris Johnson today declared at a Downing Street news conference The virus is spreading even faster than the reasonable worst case scenario and so now is the time to take action because there is no alternative.